Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about Fermat's Little Theorem. In order to understand this, in our previous classes, we already discussed a few properties of congruence. Please watch those classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, before we move on to Fermat's Little Theorem, you need to understand some basic mathematics and some basic understanding about congruence. Then we move on to Fermat's Little Theorem. Let's take this, 5 is a prime number. You take any prime number. And what are the modulus values that are going to be provided using 5? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the values, these are the modulus values you are going to get by using 5. So now, take any value that is not divisible by 5. You take any value that is not divisible by 5. So the point you need to understand, so 6 is not divisible by 5. Because 5 is a prime number, you take multiples of 6. What are the multiples of 6? 6, 12, 18, 24, so on. See, 6 modulus 5, 1. 12 modulus 5, 2. 18 modulus 5, 3. 24 modulus 5, 4. Next number is 30. 30 modulus 5, 0. You take any number that is not divisible by 5. Because 5 is a prime number, you take any number that is not divisible by 5. You take the multiples of that number, A. Here, A is 6, multiples of it. If you, if you do the modulus for each number, it is going to generate the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, again like that. The modulus values it is going to generate. Similarly, we took one more example. 8 is not divisible by 5. You take any num multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, so on, 40. 8 modulus 5, 3, 16 modulus 5, 1, 24 modulus 5, 4, 32 modulus 5, modulus 5, 2. See here, it is going to generate the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, but it is not maintaining the sequence. That is the point you need to understand. Anyhow, it is going to generate the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, again 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, again like that. So, this is the point you need to understand in order to understand the Fermat's theorem. And one more important point you need to understand. Let's take the second point. This is, this is the diagram, class diagram which we discussed in our, when we are understanding congruence. See, this is class 0 means whatever the values that present here, 0, 5, 10. If you do the modulus value, the remainder is 0. That's why it is class 0. This is class 1, 1, 6, 11, remainder is 1. 2, 7, 12, remainder is 2, 3, 8, 13, so on. Keeps on writing the number. This is, so that is what congruence means. You take any two numbers in this, they are congruent. This is the point we discussed when we discussed the congruence. So now the point we need to understand, if you have this diagram, for, this is the di class diagram for 5, because it is going to generate 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the modulus values which we are going to generate. Now class 1 contains 1, 6, 1, 6, 11, 2, 7, class 2 contains 2, 7, 12, so on. 3, 8, 13, class 4 contains 4, 9, 14. Now, now we, we need to understand these are the values. 1 modulus 5, 1. 2 modulus 5, 2. 3 modulus 5, 3. 4 modulus 4, uh, 5, 4. So these are the values that taken from class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4 all belong to different classes means you take any two numbers they are not congruent you do the multiplication of all these numbers you take you select any numbers from different set of different classes don't consider the class 0 because 0 the numbers that present in class 0 are divisible by 5 you need to take the classes that are not divisible by 5 so 1, 2, 3, 4, what is, the what is the multiplication value? 24. 24 modulus 5 is 4. Similarly, you select any 4 numbers from these 4 different classes, means which are not congruent. See, you take 6, 7, 8, 9. 6 belongs to class 1, 7 belongs to class 2, 
8 belongs to class 3, 9 belongs to class 4. You multiply them, you multiply them and divide by 5. You are going to get a modulus value of 4. Same modulus value. 1, 2, 3, 4. What is the modulus value? For 24, 4. Similarly, we take 1, 7, 8 and 4. 1 from class 1, 7 from class 2, 8 from class 3, 4 from, from class 4. You multiply them, 224. 224 modulus 5, which is 4. You are going to get the same modulus value. And similarly, you take one more example. 6 from class 1, 12 from class 2, 8 from class 3, 9 from class 4. You multiply them, 5184. When you divide by 5, the modulus value is 4. You are going to get the same modulus value. So we are going to use these two points in our Fermat's Little Theorem. Now coming to the Fermat's Little Theorem, the theorem statement says that if P is a prime number, you take any prime number P and A is an integer such that P does not divide A. Whenever you got the statement P does not divide A, multiples of A are going to generate the numbers of 1, 2, 3, 4 up up to p minus 1 the above example the first example which we discussed so if p is a prime number and a is an integer such that p does not divide a then we need to show that a power p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p this is what we need to show so the given p is a prime number and a is not divisible by p so now we are going to take that 1a, 2a, 3a, 4, 4a, so on up to p minus 1a. These are the multiples of a. And we assumed that, uh, and, and in the above, we assumed that all these belongs to different classes because means these two, you take any two numbers, they are not congruent. There we assumed that it, it is going to happen. Now we are going to show the proof for this why they are not congruent. So 1a, 2a, these are multiples of a because a does not is not divisible by p. p is a prime number. So you take any two numbers here, they are not congruent. They belong to different classes in our congruence classes. They are not congruent. We need to prove that they are not congruent. So take any two numbers, they are not congruent. We need to prove it. So now we need to prove it. Assume u a congruent to v a modulus p. We are assuming that u a congruent to v a. Here u and v values are values from 1, 2, 3 up to p minus 1. u a v a. You take any two values u a congruent to v a modulus p. We are assuming that. But at the end we need to show that this is not congruent. So now u a congruent to VA modulus P. From this statement, we know that from the congruence formula, UA minus VA divisible by P. So, UA minus VA means U minus V common A divisible by P. So, U minus VA is divisible by P means either P should divide A or P should divide U minus V. Both are not going to happen because from the given statement, A is not divisible by P. But from the from the from this U minus V means U V values are 1, 2, so on up to P minus 1 means the values that below P, P is a prime number. That is what the meaning of prime number. P means the numbers that below it are not able to divide. U minus V means the number that less than P. You are going to get a number that is less than P which is not possible. So that's why P is not going to divide U minus V, P is not going to divide A. It is not going to divide both of them. Means our assumption U A congruent to V A is false. U minus V not divisible by P, A is not divisible by P. So that's why all these classes are, uh, so that's why the assumption 1A, 2A, 3A, so on P minus 1A are not congruent. Whenever you take numbers that are not congruent, means you are taking numbers from different classes. 
So from this we can write it as a, 2a, 3a, so on up to p minus 1a multiplied by, this is congruent to 1, 2, 3, so on up to p minus 1 mod p because this modulus p and this modulus p is same. Above second uh, statement we have observed that. So that's why this is congruent to this 1, 2, 3, so on up to p minus 1 modulus p. So now, now by taking this statement, because we have proved that we are taking numbers that belongs to different classes, not congruent numbers. So from this we can we can say that this happens. Now take the a common 1, 2, 3, so on multiplied by p minus 1. So how many a's are there? p minus 1 a's are there. a power p minus 1 congruent to 1, 2, 3, so on p minus 1 modulus p. This we can write it as p minus 1 factorial a power p minus 1 congruent to p minus 1 factorial mod p. So this, this is in the form of, uh, in our last class we clearly discussed this property. If ac congruent to bc modulus m, then we can write it as a congruent to b modulus m if gcd of c comma m is equal to 1. This mathematical proof we have provided in our last class. If you want to see it, go to our previous class. Here, C is P minus 1 factorial. Both sides we are having P minus 1 factorial. Here, A is A power P minus 1. B means 1. So, now this can be written as M is P. This can be written as A power P minus 1 congruent to 1 mod P if GCD of P comma P minus 1 factorial is equal to 1. Yes, GCD of P comma P minus 1 factorial is 1 because P is a prime number. So that's why we can write a, uh, this can be written as this statement can be written as a, a power P minus 1 congruent to 1 mod P. This is what we need to show in Fermat's little theorem. And sometimes they are going to show you the same thing can be shown like this a power p congruent to a mod p means both sides multiply by a. You are going to get this. The first property in our previous pre in the last class we have discussed that a congruent to b mod m multiply with any constant you are going to get the same modulus both are congruent similarly multiply both sides with a you are going to get a power p congruent to a mod p you can show this or this both are same hope you understand fermat's little theorem if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you